So I guess this is more of a helpful tip than anything else. You can use it as an exercise if you want to, but the concept remains the same. Three different ways to be able to play an arpeggiated movement, a triad, or an arpeggio. Let's go. So if you've been playing for any length of time, even if you're a beginner, you may have come across this concept or this term triad or even arpeggio, or you may have even been playing it and not realizing what it is. But first of all, what's going on people? Hopefully you guys are doing great. If you're new here, I'm Derek Bennett from Base Nation Academy, an online based education school where you can get all of these resources, lessons, courses, live stream classes, blah, 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 all of that good stuff. I'll leave the link in the description if you're looking to enhance your bass playing to that next level. Also, if you're new here, subscribe, hit that red subscribe button at the bottom, hit the notification bell, all of that good stuff so you can get notified every time we upload a video here on the channel. So now that that's out the way, let's get into the lesson. When I first learned this concept, it kind of dramatically changed my playing in a way that unlocked a few doors that I didn't know that were locked or that were there. So it's a very simple concept, but the concept is a triad, a major triad. So we have one, three, and five. And I'll show you why and watch towards the end so you can see exactly why this is so beneficial. So let's learn the three ways we can play this first. So we have C major triad, C, E, G. You should be familiar with that by now. Or we can play it here, C, E, G, one, three, five. First note, third note, fifth note of the scale. Okay, so we're gonna be figuring out how to play that three different ways. The next way, we're gonna play with our first finger. Start with our first finger. We're gonna play one, three, five again, but our three is gonna be here on the E string, and our five will be here, the same spot it was before. So we have one, three, five. That's the second way to play it. The third way to play it is starting with your fourth finger. One, three, five, moving backwards down the scale, down the fretboard. So now you kind of cover up a little bit more ground instead of playing it just this way and being stuck playing it that way, we learned a few more shapes that we can use if we're ever in that situation. So like I said, keep watching to see exactly why this is gonna help. Next one, we're gonna do minor as well. Minor, you can use this with an arpeggio, you can add the seventh to that as well. So you can do one, three, five, seven, the same exact way. So let's do, let's do that real quick. So we got one, three, five, seven. But once you learn this concept, you see that adding those extensions won't be that hard at all to do. So let's go minor, same thing. So with our major, we had one, three, five, right? So that was our first way to play it. So now minor, we have one, minor three, five, okay? And that's one note difference. So we have first note, third note, fifth note, or first finger, fourth finger, third finger to play these triads. Okay, and if you wanna add the seventh, boom, that minor seventh is right there on that fret, on the D string, okay? On the eighth fret. So, minor, that's our triad. All right, major, that was our triad. Now, the second way to play that minor triad, we can do third finger, first finger, and then shift up with our fourth finger. See that? So we have third finger, the one, the minor three on the A string on the sixth fret, and on the 10th fret is our fifth note, okay? So that's the second way to play that. Also, just like the first one or the major, you can play this again or another way starting with your fourth finger. So now, minor, we got our root note C, our minor third, and then the fifth on the D string on the fifth fret. See that? So now that we have three different ways to play these exercises, we can actually manipulate that when we come into contact with these different arpeggios or different triads inside of a song. So this is what I was talking about before when I said watch to the end to see the benefit of these triads. So say for instance, you're playing a one, six, two, five bass line. One, six, two, five. So to create a bass line around that, usually you can start off with triads or arpeggios. That's one of the easiest ways to create a bass line with this chord progression. So what we're gonna do is play triads along with it, along with this bass line. So for the C major triad or C major chord, we're gonna play that major triad, right? The first way. Then for the six, 
should start on the A. So instead of playing a, a minor triad for the six, which is a minor for that six chord progression or the six degree scale degree, it's going to be a minor triad. We can play it instead of jumping here to here, we can play A, that fourth finger position, right? So we have fourth finger, second finger, first finger, and that's our minor triad. A minor triad. So to play those two triads together back to back, we have C, A. See, my hand doesn't move at all, so I don't have any shifting to do. So now I'm playing smarter, not harder, right? If you guys see a couple lessons back, I called it play smarter, not harder. And I love these concepts because it actually allows you to think a little bit more instead of just shifting. Sorry if I can shift the right way. Instead of shifting, you can actually think a little bit more what's the closest shape that I have to that next note. It's not that you're being lazy. It's actually you're thinking a little bit more when you're playing that way or thinking that way. Okay, so, but being able to know how to play them in all of those shapes is very beneficial because you never know when you might need them. If it goes to another chord, if it goes to another spot, if you have to do a lick or a fill in, in between that and then come back to it, you never know. So learning it in all of those positions are is, is very vital. Okay, so next one. So we have a one, the six, the two. No, so, so now for the two, we actually use a dominant seven chord. So I'll put that up here, dominant seven chord. You usually would see a minor for that, but I think I played a, yeah, I think I played a dominant seven chord for that one. Um, yeah, dominant seven chord for that one. And for that dominant seven chord, it's still major with a flat seven, but so now we can play that major triad the fourth position instead of playing it uh, instead of shifting there and we don't want to do that it's nothing wrong with that but there's other ways to do it so we could do c major a minor d so that i don't have to move my hand at all and then the last one last but not least is the g the five chord and that five chord is also a major triad and I have a G right here on the third fret E string. And now I'm back home. All right, so let's play it all together. So you see what I mean? I, I can play that entire bass line, that entire chord progression in one position, just one position on this part of the fretboard. So, instead of, or, instead of jumping all over the place and making it harder for me. So you see how difficult that was jumping back and forth. But, like I said, learning each way is very, very important. I, I don't say, I'm not saying just learn it one way or this way. Learn it all three ways that we went over them because you never know when you'll use them. This is just an example of when you can use something like this for a very common chord progression, one, six, two, five chord progression. So make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. If you guys have any questions or comments, I'd love to chat it up with you in the comment section and check you guys in the next one next week.